there was a time in the city of Sacramento when we, the people, could exercise our constitutional right to redress of grievances before our legislative bodies. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't been the case since Mayor Johnson came to town and new draconian council rules were established. But even around those draconian rules, we found ways to at least communicate what was going on in front of that body and some of the rather limited access that we have. But now a new dirty trick has surfaced that has made it very difficult for us to do that, and we want to know why. We used to be able to go to the archives and pull up a council session where we wanted to hear particular citizens address members of the council on critical issues facing our city. We could do that by pulling up the online archives, listening to the council session, looking at the adjoining council agenda after the meeting was completed, select that individual citizen that we wanted to listen to, and very quickly hear what they had to say. We could also go back and listen to what a council member had to say by clicking on their name, No more. Yes, you can listen to a council member by clicking on their name, but oh no, we don't want to make it easy for you to listen to one of council members' constituents, a member of our community. These dirty tricks have got to stop. Somebody is not paying attention, and why can't we find anyone willing to take on these draconian rules that have established we the people have no rights to redress of grievances, even to our own elected representative. That's right. If we try to ask a question or make a comment to our own elected council member, we can be escorted out of the chambers by the Sacramento Police Department Sergeant at Arms. What a country. And you got to ask the question, who's on our side? Next, you're going to see this play out with a screen capture of an actual council meeting where we're trying to navigate through to find critical testimony made by members of our community. Just imagine you sitting at your computer trying to accomplish the same thing. Thank you for listening. Affordability in what locations or whether they're aiming to serve any special needs populations. The schedule also doesn't make clear how much funding is available for each application period. All of this information would be available if SHRA used a notice of funding availability or request for proposals process, as comparable cities do. By clearly articulating the types of projects it wishes to fund, SHRA would be ensuring it receives proposals that are as competitive as possible, while also making its work more understandable to community members. This have the city auditor uh, come up uh, real quick. Uh, This is in regards to item number seven, finding uh, number one. From our last conversation, uh, when we did the report, uh, one of the findings was to ensure that all affordable housing funds are announced through an annual public notice, um, such as a um, notice of funding uh, availability or request for proposal. The outcome here, or your your, uh, analysis from the audit, you indicate Come back up. And yeah. Mr. Douglas. And Jan, and, and like I said, even when people aren't here for the issues, if we could go in order, it would make it so much better. I would still like to speak uh, my two minute time for each, like Mr. Mack and, and the other man that was up here. Maybe I didn't fill up, out the paper right, but I was <clears throat> about to come. If we could go in order, it would make it so much better. I would still like to speak uh, my two minute time for each, like Mr. Mack and, and the other man that was up here. Maybe I didn't fill the, out the paper right, but. Um, so there's a lot of toxics that the, the Park Department just does not care about. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Hey, Trina. Following Trina is Mac Worthy and then Janet Frick or Fricky. <clears throat> so side note, uh, your rebounded economy needs to be broken down by race, class, and housing status, and then we can have a real conversation about whether our economy has uh, bounced back. In August of 2015, this council established the Sacramento Community Commission, Police Commission, for the purpose of providing recommendations to the mayor and city council on bias-free policing and the implementation, evaluation, and sustainability of efforts intended to if we could go in order, it would make it so much better. I would still like to speak uh, 
my two minute time for each, like Mr. Mack and, and the other man that was up here. Maybe I didn't fill choose if you could go in order, it would make it so much better. I would still like to speak. Uh, choose if you could go in order. Absolutely no concern about the public is uh, throughout the entire management. Um, this is, you talk about toxic. Uh, I get, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, toxic. Questions and answers, I think it was the fairer employment housing as well. Then you to make recommendations, provide feedback, and air complaints as needed about the Sacramento Police Department. So this is a civilian board made up of civilians to inform the council about what other civilians are experiencing. This is not, should not, and will not be a police board created for law enforcement to control the dialogue and the narrative surrounding community and police relations here in Sacramento. 